In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My name is Father Philip Smith of the Kent Estuary Catholic Churches in the southern part of Cumbria. I'm going to give a homily on the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B, in the Catholic Cycle, for the 6th of October. The first reading uh, is a very familiar one from the book of Genesis, familiar in weddings. It's not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate. And uh, God fashioned from one of his ribs the woman. It's a statement that the woman is not smaller, but is of the same stuff as man, the same. And it ends up, this is why a man leaves his father and mother and joins himself to his wife and they become one body. He's in actual fact almost making himself whole again. Um, the psalm is a sort of complimentary psalm about uh, the blessing of a man and his wife, the fruitful vine at the centre of the home. The second reading uh, speaks about the sacrifice of our Lord for his people. He suffered him, he suffered, submitted to death, and it was his purpose in doing so to bring a great many of his sons into glory. In other words, to bring us up to heaven. So the word uh, suffering for others. Finally, the gospel. The gospel um, is about uh, this rather embittered conversation between the hostile Pharisees and our Lord. There were many such conversations, and this one was about marriage. They said, Moses allows, allowed us to, vo to divorce. What do you say? It was a test. Um, and uh, it was a you know, test as to what was our Lord's view on the Mosaic law, which bound people in the state of Israel or uh, at the time. Our Lord goes back to Genesis before Moses, right from the creation, and says, look there. What did it say? Man was made female, male and female made them fe male and female. And this is why a man leaves father and mother and the two become one body. They're no longer two therefore, but one body. That's So then, what God has united, man must not divide. Again, familiar from the wedding ceremony. And the, um, the apostles um, said, this is very hard. And our Lord didn't alter. And immediately after, there was something that, in a sense, is a sort of commentary upon the way this teaching is to be taken. People were bringing little children to him for him to touch them. The disciples tried to turn them away. Don't bother the Lord. He's tired. But our, our Lord used the occasion to welcome the little children and bless them. He pointed out that uh, the kingdom of God is one in which little children are very welcome. Anyone who does not welcome the kingdom of God like a little child, will never enter it. And he applies it 
to those listening. You must have the directness, the openness to God's teaching of a little child. Let's go on then and consider all of that. So Jesus makes clear the teaching on the sanctity of marriage, as we will put it. He repeats the teachings of Genesis by saying that spouses become one body, that what God has united, man must not put asunder, must not divide. It's something planned by God and it's not negotiable. When questioned about the difficulty of marriage by the apostles, as I said, he happened to be blessing little children brought to him. So he pointed out that heaven belongs to such little children and I think he meant that heaven belongs to those who have the open acceptance and directness of little children. In the context of the statement on marriage and the questions of the apostles, he was clearly saying, I accept my teaching on marriage with the directness of little children. No ifs and buts. Now, but we can ask, why is he so clear about the permanence of marriage? What is so important about marriage? Well, marriage is central to God's plan for the building up of society. Remember, God always plans build up. The devil plans break up. Marriage is central to God's plan then, so that we may all live in the fullness of life together. Marriage is the building block of a stable society, on which all social life is built. And this teaching obviously speaks to married people first. Marriage is vital for society. It asks all Christian people, however, to support marriage. So we must all be involved, whoever we are. Do we support and honour marriage and the family? Do we build up married people? in our community. One member of our parish told a little story. She had a young family. In a quiet way, an older member of the church adopted the family. She was there to sit with some of the children in church and look after them. She was also there to help in useful ways outside the church she supported marriage and the family. Now, this teaching also has a wider application for all Christians. Christians have to think in terms of family. As Christians, Jesus is saying we must all, married or not, persevere faithfully in building up our own family, our church family, and indeed, our own local community. We support each other, especially when in difficulty within the family of faith. This is one of the most lovely things and touching things in our church families. One of our parishioners has got the flu very recently. When I rang, already another parishioner had contacted her and was doing her shopping. Family of faith. That's why in our vision statement we say we aim to be a welcoming family of faith. A reporter, you know, asked Cardinal Hume, how can he, a single person, speak about faithfulness in marriage and know about resisting temptation? As if he was completely divorced from the world. His answer was said in the context of a marriage relationship. He said, well, I'm in, I'm in, in the church. I'm, in fact, he said, I'm married to the church and the church is with me always. I too struggle to be faithful to my wife at times. So the teaching is of wider application than just to married people alone. We Christians are to be outstanding then in supporting groups that help relieve want or 
build up others in whatever way. Our churches, our members are prominent in building up community. The SVP, those supporting food shares and food banks and the like, the Kent Estuary Youth Organisation, all bring together and support people, building them up. So, all this loving self-sacrifice and perseverance on the part of those giving help, it dem it's demanded. We must be ready to make sacrifices to build up relationships. Jesus, after all, suffered and sacrificed himself, and submitted to death, so that we may have life in its fullness. He died for his people. Jesus certainly is saying that he died, that God will give us grace and power to live this self-sacrificing life in imitation of himself. We do not do it alone. Our prayer might be something like this. Lord, help me to be the faithful person you want me to be. May I be strong in service and self-sacrificing love for my spouse, my family, my church family and my community. In so doing, I pray that your love may grow among us and your kingdom come through Christ our Lord. Amen. God be with you and keep you.